Okay, this is Engineer Pat again. I'm going to do a basic configuration with some internet faces. So I'm going to use my my uh, putty. It's my terminal emulation, as you see here. I'm going to choose COM1. And say load. And say open. And there I have new new box there. For emulation. Next it does this is just emulation, so you can connect to your your. Uh, console port on your Cisco devices or other devices that you have to configure. Alrighty, so I'm just going to hit it once. Should be there. Go into enable mode. From here I'm going to go into config mode. Oops. T. Now I'm going to type a uh, host name. Oops, host name. Host name is going to be my router. Okay, you see the prompt now changed to my router. Next thing I'm gonna configure is a, a domain name. You need this if you're gonna do uh, configure a uh, crypto key and for SSH. So I'm gonna say IP domain name, and I'm gonna say again my domain, my D O M A I N. Okay, that's done. Now I'm gonna do uh, generate a key. This key allows the uh, to use use SSH and different different uh, key handling shape where basically basically authentication between uh, uh, like putty client and an SSH, uh, the SSH portion of the uh, router for you to be able to actually authenticate into the router even if you're using a uh, TACX server or something like that. So here we go, I'm going to say crypto, CR, CRY, you can just hit tab and it'll fill it out. Crypto and I'm going to say key and I'm going to say, whoops, I need too much space, key and then I'm going to say gen. And I'm going to hit tab say generate and I'm going to say RSA because that's the type of key you want to be able to generate. Next prompt should be the size. I always use 1024, that's my preference. Size key, hit enter. It says generate a key, it will be non exportable. And basically, what you do if you're gonna, once you uh, are done utilizing this device, you would basically zero rise or erase the entire config out and zero rise the uh, key. So the key is not uh, sh shipped out or put in the garbage somewhere with the key in it in your configuration. Okay, it says SSH enable. Uh, we're going to change the version once we get in, so we're going to hit enter. Okay, from here I'm going to create uh, some interfaces. So I'm going to say int, I'm going to say fa0 slash 0 0.1. The point 0.1 gives you the sub interface, which allows you to basically divide an interface into <clears throat> a couple of interfaces. Which is known as router on a stick. Uh, you can cook, hook a couple switches or a couple different VLANs to it, uh, running over those switches over a trunk. So this is how you do that side. And basically, you leave everything admin down until you're ready to bring it up. So to get started, I'm going to go ahead and enter. The uh, next thing I have to do is have to uh, do the encapsulation. So I'm going to say encap. Tab and say encapsulation. I'm going to say dot. And yeah, say so it's going to give me the one queue, which you want, or you can use ISL if you're using all of Cisco, if you want to use Cisco proprietary. Now you have to tell the VLAN you want. So, since this is my first one, I'm going to create, I'm going to say VLAN 1, even though for security reasons, you normally don't use VLAN 1 anymore. You use different VLANs. So, I'm going to say 1, the VLAN, and there it is. And then it tells you it doesn't support it. So, now I'm going to give an IP address. I'm going to say 192. Dot one six eight. This is all private because we're not going anywhere. One dot one, and I'm gonna give it a subnet mask of uh, either two forty eight or two forty. It all depends on anything. If you have, you have to know the number of of devices you're gonna have behind, or if you're gonna do natting, or if you're gonna do pat port address translation natting. If you're gonna do nat network address translation. Um, so you have to know what you're going to do before you actually set all this up. You basically sit down and build your whole plan, especially according to the Cisco way. That's what you want to do anyway. Develop it all on paper before you put in. But I'm just doing this just to show people how to do it. And I'm just going to say 240. That gives you 14 use by IP addresses. And I'm going to hit enter. I'm not going to give it the no shut command, but I'm going to tab up because so I'm going to go back. Uh, I'm going to say dot .2. This is my second interface with router on the stick. I'm gonna come back, tab twice, and I'm gonna head over to this one over here. I'm gonna say two. Oops. I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna say two, and that'll be my second network. I'm 
Uh, oops, I forgot something. All right, skip the command. That guy should have told me. If it's that two, I got to do the encapsulation. And Q is going to be being there too. And now we're going to put the IP address in. All right, we're going to do the third one. Now we do the dot. Oops, encapsulation for the third VLAN. Put in the third subnet. And it's going to be 3.1. All right, so you have to be careful when you're typing this all in. You can make a lot of mistakes, but here is the router on the stick portion <clears throat> of the, on the, the router portion of the router on the stick. You still have to go back to your switches and all that if you're going to have like a big network. Um, it'd be your distribution layer and, and your other layers that are involved with this, your access layers. Uh, this is pretty much uh, like we run a collapse layer at the place I'm at, but it's kind of collapsed. So but you pretty much want to still follow as much of the Cisco doctrine as possible as far as breaking out your network and dividing it up. So um, just to get it to uh, the next layer and then so forth and so forth. So you get through all three layers. But normally this is your premise router and you're setting it up first and then you get to your core and then you get to your distribution and you get your access. Um, and that's how you'll set your VLANs accordingly from your core all the way down. No, me don't want to have any any too much in your core other than uh, than what's necessary. You're pretty much, putting put all your VLANs normally from your distribution down. But uh, some places you have to do a little bit of VLAN and trunking at least to get to those places. So you're gonna do a lot of trunking to be able to get to your distribution and to your access. So hope that was uh, informative, and that completes this video for now. Thank you.